What's that, Master Higgins? Your dry cleaning still isn't in? Oh, this is recording. Oh, hi folks! Welcome back to another Let's Play of Super Adventure Island 2, where the semi-nude Master Higgins just finished clearing Haya Haya Island and defeated the Frost Mammoth boss. Unfortunately, Tina wasn't in the basement of that island either. Surprise, surprise, right? Although, why exactly an eagle would be in the basement of an island made of ice? I don't know. I think Tina's a little delusional myself, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, we're going to seek some divine guidance through drug-induced dreams, basically. So let's visit the inn at Waku Waku Island. Our inn has a reputation for inducing wondrous dreams. That'll be ten coins. Can you afford such luxury? You now have 1,685 coins. Uh, yeah, we can afford ten. Welcome, sir. Please rest your weary head. Sure, I sure will, and I'm gonna hump your bed while I'm at it, too. Higgins soon falls fast asleep, and in his dream, he hears a familiar but distant voice. Can you hear me? Hear me? I'm stashed in the basement of Boa Boa Island, 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 Island. The entrance is hidden beneath five floors, 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 The five floors can be accessed one by one by one by one by one. Find the levers to open the way, the way, the way, the way. Walk through the wall to find the sun switch, sun switch, sun switch, sun switch. There's a hot spring nearby, bye, bye. That's where you'll find the sun switch, sun switch, sun switch. Top of the morning to you, sir. I trust you had a pleasant dream. Uh, that wouldn't be my best description for it. But sure, we'll go with that. Drug-induced, hazy, cryptic. I'd prefer that, but sure, pleasant dream works too. So now that we have the sun ring, we can put that to good use here on the altar. And the sun ring says that it causes volcanoes to erupt. Now, logistically, I don't think that'd probably be the best idea considering you're standing on a volcanic island! But hey, what can I say? It's a game. The volcano erupted and blew the gate down. And somehow, Master Higgins survived the explosion that was about, what, four feet away? If it blew the gate down and it missed him, that's what, four feet? <laughs> I don't ask. I'm not a physics major. Anyway, let's get started. The basic goal of this island is avoid, avoid, avoid. We don't have enough life to really take these monsters on with only Master Higgins fists as our weapons. The weakest enemies are these dragons, and they requ well, technically this guy is our weakest. He only requires two. The dragons require three hits, and then everything else from there on basically requires four or more hits. Up to the turtles actually require up to eight hits to kill. In this section here, you want to not hold down the run button and do short little jumps to go to each of these platforms in order to miss that mole along the way. More dirt to dig through here, but we don't have an implement yet, so we'll have to come back to that later. Oh, that mole got me. And then the uh, ground to the left of me is actually a trap door, so we'll need to do a running leap over that to get to this cave. And inside, we have a tablet. The boss has a weakness. Use the ice sword that's located behind the sun blocks on the Isle of Poca Poca. Well, that's all good and true, but if you're playing along with the challenge itself, you're not allowed to use that sword. So, too bad, too sad. On this slope, it's best to do running jumps down the whole thing, because, as you'll see in just a moment, there's a boulder falling on you. So make sure to avoid that at all costs. It can do, I think, a half heart damage every time it hits you.
Now, ascending up this area can be kind of tedious and tricky because those those flying bat skull things like to get in your way a lot. Like that. And then these rock turtles, or whatever they are, take eight hits. So it's better just to avoid them, too. Now here we have a choice. We can go right or left. I'm going to start by going left, because there's a treasure chest we can get over here. Now here's what is dangerous about this level, is these moving platforms with enemies in the way, because unless you can kill the enemy in time, it's going to knock some of your health off. So you have to be really rapid with your attacks. Now we can't quite jump up there yet, so we'll have to just walk off the edge and back down to the boulder slope. Thankfully it dropped us off halfway down so we don't have to really race down the thing to avoid that boulder. Now we just have to backtrack up all over again. Oh, he almost hit me. Keeping your life bottles as full as possible is the real tricky part of this level. That was close too. Oh, and then I screwed it up. I have to do it over again. Ooh, baby. Somehow I'm getting lucky. I never get this lucky in my test runs, I swear. Now off to the right here, we can climb back up to the main hallway. That's where we dropped down earlier. Well, actually, no, it's to the left farther. But we can also climb this rope now. And we are on the other side of the wall that we couldn't get past on the overworld area. Uh, over to the right here we have the Sun Shrine and some barrier blocks. Obviously Sun is the symbol of this island in that case. So now we can finally turn off that Sun Switch. But before you do that, head over to the right off of these clouds to get a chest. You have to ob obviously have the Sun Blocks uh, visible in order to get it. And that nuts us another magic bottle and our second spell, which is the only one you can use in this challenge, and that's Recovery. And it basically restores half of a heart for your health meter. Uh, obviously it's not the best spell, but it's the only one I allow you to use in the challenge in order to make it a little more difficult. Well, a lot more difficult, really. <laughs> Let's be honest. And off to the far left, we have a chest with the ice shield. And a wombat that wanted to ass rape me. Thankfully, they all spawn in nice areas on the way back, so you can just jump over them. Now, heading back down, actually, we'll go up. There we go. Now, just avoid these guys for the most part. They shouldn't be too much of a problem and let this guy suicide off the edge. And now we can get rid of this guy here so that the bowl isn't in our way as much. Let's head down here. Oops, there we go. And off to the right we have a cave with mm, a hot springs. Remember what the clue said about a hot springs and the sun switch being behind a wall near it? Well, if we head back up, there's a wall, and there's a suspicious-looking line. Oh, wonder what's... wonder what that's hiding. Yep, the sun switch. So let's turn that off for now. Uh, the first order of business is to actually revisit other islands with sun switches. But the only one I really want to get to for now is Poka Poka Island where that uh, ice sword is in case you're playing along but you're not using these rules. So the trick is to fall through the floor like you just saw and then head left to this cave. And now we can finally push that switch we saw back on Poka Poka Island and the islands are now connected. Voila! We're back on Poka. So now our mission is just to get to that ice sword behind those sun blocks. I'll try to make it over there as quick as possible before this episode ends. Ah, to hell with you. There we go. 
all familiar territory, so there's not much I can say about this. So have any of you guys seen any good LPs lately aside from any of mine? I subscribe to a few people, but I'm always looking for new LPs to watch. I like to watch them while I'm at work, actually. It makes the day go by quicker. So if you have any recommendations for good LPers, let me know and I'll take a look at their videos. Just post a comment or something. There we go, and behind the sunblocks we get... The Ice Sword! And we're going to call it a video here. We'll see you next time on Super Adventure Island 2.